Dead the Dark. Welcome back, Crip Crew. It is so good to have you all here today. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Lost in the Dark podcast episode. What is this going to be? Like 248 ish? Knocking on 250, knocking on 250, getting there. But today we welcome brand new to the show, very special guests all the way from Texas. I believe uh, Dawn of Flames is joining us today. Uh, It was an awesome time getting to talk with them. Uh, they j- be sure to check out their brand new video came out just a couple months ago go for the track lost it all link in the description below and uh yeah it, w- it was just we cover the gambit anybody who's ever seen the show knows we cover everything we go over every uh, uh how everybody got into metal we talk about some tour stories uh they have a huge show coming up soon in germany so we definitely talk a lot about that and uh, what's in store for the future and everything. So, yeah, it was an absolute great time. Had an absolute blast talking with these guys. I hope they come back on the show again and uh, and we get to do it again because it was it was a whole lot of fun and, and they're a really good band. One definitely you want to watch out for. Shoot, Huge shout out, as always, to Keith uh, from the Convalescence and Legend Recording Agency for putting us in contact. Um, yeah, this was, this was an absolute blast of an episode um and i hope you all enjoy it without further ado my friends welcome to lost in the dark podcast dawn of flames horns up welcome back to lost in the dark podcast everyone i am here with dead boy felipe sammy and mark and they are dawn of flames thank you guys so much for being here today thank you for having me thank you you. All my pleasure. All my pleasure. Uh, where, real quick, where are you guys uh, coming to us from right now? Austin, Texas. Awesome. Hell yeah. That's that's far away from Lansing, Michigan. So that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, before before we get into anything, just so anybody watching this sees it right from the start, do you guys have anything that you want to plug right now? Anything upcoming or anything at all you want to promote? Taco flip. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> Germany, yes, you're going to Germany. Right. Is that yeah. a to- We'll be over there just for uh for about a week, uh landing in Paris, uh do some exploring over there. And uh this will be our first time performing in Germany uh with Donna Flame. So big, big deal for us. That's huge. Uh that's huge. Where uh where will you guys be performing? In a town that we cannot pronounce. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 but we we've got flyers uh, that we're posting right now on our social medias Beautiful. so um it's got it there but don't ask us how to pronounce it because yeah. german 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 stuff yeah. yeah and and how many how many shows do you have over there and it's just one just big one. Huge halloween party oh uh, so yeah it'll be halloween night everybody's gonna get dressed up and everything so um uh, I, I actually uh, frequently visit Germany, and I was there like, two years ago, and uh, they had a huge, huge, um, I was, actually it was just one year ago, had a huge Halloween party, and it was like packed, so I was like, we got to get these guys, you know, over here and, and you know, show Germany how Texas rocks. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Well, that's, that's, is this the first time, so this would be the first time for you guys playing outside of the country together technically yeah, yeah. oh we, we played, played mexico yeah yeah, yeah we played oh. Mexico. oh wow okay that's really cool awesome where in mexico did you play Acuna. Acuna. yeah yeah it was a cunha coahuila it's, okay it's yeah. right next to our hometown well my hometown and what? sammy's hometown yeah what's yes. your hometown yeah uh del rio texas oh okay all right oh hell yeah all right beautiful that's awesome excellent um so okay uh, uh, I guess my first, my first question for you guys really is, uh, because in doing, doing, I try to do some research on everybody I'm about to talk to for the first time. Um, and in doing research, I, uh, I'm, I'm very curious about like the band's origins because there seemed to be, uh, started like in 2011 and, and then maybe there was a hiatus. I'm not really sure. Like it was a little confusing when I was doing the research. So I'm very curious. What are, uh, what is the Dawn of Flames band origin? Philippe, you're up. Yeah. Well, uh, I was living in Eagle Pass, Texas. And, uh, it's one of those things where I, you know, I brand new to the town. I posted a flyer up at a music store and, uh, 
had a drummer reach out to me and that's where it started. Um, and we started just writing music, playing music, and then everybody started coming along. We got a vocalist and everything. And then, uh, and then we started playing shows and, and it's kind of crazy. Um, because we, it was a rough patch because, um, we had several members pass away. Uh, our original drummer, he passed away, uh, Luis Chacho Gonzalez, he passed away. And then a couple of years later, our original vocalist passed away too. It was a, a veteran, a three-time Purple Heart. So he had a lot of things going on with PTSD and everything, and, and it finally took him. Um, and then from there, it, it, it's always been like a, you know, do we bring it on? Do we, you know, continue? And and it's sort of, I've, I've kept it going. And then that's when everybody else kind of just came along and, and we're all friends from Del Rio. And, and we just started writing music again and everything. And it's funny, uh, Mark, the drummer, um, I was actually, the way I met him is pretty crazy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was on tour with Michael Graves uh, here in Texas. I was playing guitar with Michael Graves and uh, we had a show in San Antonio and our vocalist at the time, like he blew his voice out and we went, we opened up for Michael Graves. We played a couple of songs and I was like, hey guys, uh, you know, our vocalist is out. So we're just going to play a couple of songs for you guys, instrumental. And we're jamming out and there's this guy, Mark, front stage going crazy. And he starts like saying, hey, I'll, I'll go up there. I'll go up there. I'll sing. And I, I was like, hey, yeah, hell yeah. We pulled him up on stage and he just <laughs> freaking uh, went at it. And then uh, after that show, Michael comes up to me. He's like, hey, you're looking for a singer. That's your singer right there. And that's where it started. He, he was our vocalist at one point. And then he went into the drums and everything. And it's just been a, a, a crazy cycle. And I'm, we're just doing it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that is, that is a wild story. I'm sorry to hear about your losses. Um, that is, that is a wild story though. So, so it has been going, uh, you, you, you're a co-founder and it has been going since about 2011 with some hiatuses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That's wild. That's wild. Um, uh, so then, then I, this is, this is more of a, I guess this would be more of a question for everybody individually. Um, you know, uh, I and and I like to ask this to everybody uh, the first time I get to talk to them because it's it's just such a crazy thing to me because ninety nine point nine percent of the population uh, doesn't even like heavy metal and and even more of them think it's crazy to even listen to so I'm always curious about how people like found their way into this form of music at all. Like, so what are your sort of like heavy metal origins, I guess? Uh, so I grew up skating. So, you know, all the homies and stuff, that's all pretty much we listened to. We grew up listening to Suicidal and it just kind of went on to Sepultura and Crash and then went up to like heavier stuff, you know, Morbid Angel and Pantera came around. So that's kind of how I grew up just from skating. That's how I picked it up. And then I decided I wanted to start playing guitar and learn how to do all that and just started joining different bands growing up and now here I am. Hell yeah. What, um, the, uh, uh, Sam, uh, uh, I was trying to figure out, I do have a quick question for you. I was trying to figure out what, um, in, in the lost it all music video, what kind of bass are you playing? A Schecter. Oh, it is a Schecter. Okay. Yeah. Dude, that thing is gnarly. I fucking oh, love thanks. it. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I love that bass. It has a real good tone. Not too expensive. It gets the job done. I love, oh, I love Schecter's in general. They're, they're, it's a great company. Yeah. Awesome though. Hell yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, but yeah, Felipe, um, what, yeah, your heavy metal origins. Yeah. As for me, I, I started with Metallica, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. that was what got me in, uh, Guns N' Roses, Metallica. And then I discovered, uh, The Haunted. And Ooh. they blew my mind, and and that's where uh, a lot of my influences come from. Is like the haunted at the gates. Um, I like that that melodic metal, um, mm -hmm. that speed melodic metal, and um, but yeah, that's that's really where or 
I was like, wow, I, I want to play music like that. And how, how, how did you like, did someone show it to you or did you just kind no, of stumble I, on it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was the, the Napster days back in the ah, day. Like, you get on there and you start just downloading random music and everything. And all of a sudden this song came on and I was like, what, what is this? And then I just started downloading everything I could on them. And, and that's where it all started. Wow. So me, uh, <laughs> That's but I grew up watching wrestling. I really like the music they came out to, like <laughs> Jeff Hardy and CM Punk. Wait, wait, wait. What kind of music would they come out to? Like metal or like rock. Really? Yeah. Like CM Punk came out to Kill Switch Engaged. Oh, no shit. I never knew that. Firebird. Stone Cold did, uh, dis or Disturbed did yeah. Stone Cold's theme. They redid mm -hmm. it. Motorhead did Triple H. What? Motorhead? Oh, okay. That's really interesting to me, actually, because I listen to, uh, you guys know who Jamie Jost is, uh, lead singer of Hatebreed. Um, I listen to his podcast all the time, and he's always talking about, like, trying to get, like, walkout music for, for uh, wrestling or UFC people. Um, and how, like, difficult it is for, like, because there's, like, some gatekeepers, and they don't, they apparently don't like playing metal or something like that. And so that's really interesting to me. That wow, that, 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 that the, they use a lot of like cold orange, motionless, and white. Okay, all right. So that was your kind of gateway into it, then. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. All right, and I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as a kid, I wasn't allowed to listen to metal music. So, I was introduced to pop music and then rap okay. music. And then finally, my parents are like, okay, maybe we should have the talk with them. And they sat me down and they go, this is Limp Bizkit. <laughs> this is Corn. This is Metallica. And once you finished with that, we'll get you some dessert. Here's some Slayer and some Pantera. And that's about it. <laughs> so your, your parents showed it to you that? Yes, they, they were metalheads in disguise the whole time. They just didn't want me to show up to school looking like this guy. <laughs> wow, that's so wild. They, they hid it from me, yeah. But that's eventually they, they shared the, the goods and I got to be able to experience the good stuff. And I've got to plug you in because you're about to die in like 20 seconds. So I'll be back. All right, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> but please, please. Um, Wow, that is great. That I've actually that's the first time I've ever heard a story uh kind of like an origin individual origin story like that, that's for sure. Um <laughs> what and I am sorry, uh uh Felipe, what was the town that you what was the town that you said you guys are all from? Well uh we all the band originated in Del Rio. Del, Del Rio. Rio. Yeah. And what is, is there is there like a uh is there like a metal scene in in Del Rio, it's not a, it's not, it's not a big metal scene, but, but there's a scene. It's it's very. Uh, it's more punk. Yeah, it's more punk. Okay. And then uh, we sort of started playing metal and feeding it down their throats, and <laughs> and you know, we got accepted, you know, some places, and then uh, after that we started putting up our own shows, and then that's where I met uh, Keith actually from the convalescence. Because uh, um, Katie invited us to open up a show in San Antonio with them. Yeah, because Katie lives down there. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, and then that's where it all began. And then uh, we would host uh, like festivals in Del Rio, and we invited them to come out and play and stuff. And, uh, and that's how it all like began, that little uh, you know, relationship with, with Keith. So. And that's how you end up on the Legend Recording Agency. Yeah, yeah. And so when, what, about what year would, would that have been that you guys first met? Oh, I think this was, we still had uh, the original singer. So I, I believe it was like in 2014, 15. Oh, wow. Wow. We played down in San Antonio together. And That's then incredible. by the, the next year, I, I believe, uh, in Del Rio, they came out and we had a festival there. Wow. Okay. And, and so is this, it, it, um, Dawn of Flames, is this, uh, uh, all of your like first project 
or have you guys all been in like other projects before? My first band opened up for Donald Flames. When no they- way. Yeah. So you got a drummer who you pulled up on stage who was freaking out in the front row, and you got a singer who opened up for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, the old vocalist was the bassist in my old band, too. What? Yeah. Holy shit. It's a small town, yeah. so everybody kind of just shared it. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> And then Sammy too. He, he he's, I mean, he yeah, plays everywhere blank. too. So yeah. and Mark. <laughs> yeah, Sammy also plays uh, the bass for Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell because he wears makeup. makeup you can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> the age is there, but the makeup is. So. <laughs> that's incredible, though. That's awesome. How ah yeah, that's 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 really cool. How you guys all kind of came together in that in that way. That's uh. You don't see that that much anymore, I don't feel. And I think that's a really, really cool thing. Um, so uh, how did you guys all get playing your, like, individual instruments then? Like, what were your, some, like, uh, uh, was it, um, did you, did, did you all come in already playing these instruments or, or were there some change-ups? I started screaming in the shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think we've all, well, I mean, ex- for the exception of Mark, I mean, he was our vocalist at one point and then the drummer. But I think for the most part, yeah, he's always been the bassist. Okay. The- and guitars. I've always played the guitar there. Well, where do you guys, then I, I have to know, um, uh, where do you guys, uh, what, who got you, like, who got you uh, uh, Fired. physically and uh, influentially into playing your instrument? Well, for me, I think I was in uh, seventh grade and I had a neighbor who started taking guitar classes in school. And every day after school, he'd walk by carrying his acoustic guitar. And I was like, man, that's cool. You know, like I want to learn that. So uh, after school, he'd be outside in his you know, patio, like just strumming away. And I'd go over there and, and watch. And I'd just watch him and, and see what he did. And then I'd try to remember it, run home. And I had this old, like, $50 pawn shop electric guitar that I found out later that didn't even work. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I would go home and try to remember what he was playing and, and then, you know, try to just copy that. And that's where I started. Um, after that, like, I kind of, like, developed it in the ear. So I would listen to music on the radio, anything that was playing, like, Nirvana, whatever. And and, uh, and I would start trying to like play it, and and I developed the ear, and then after that I, I was just uh, you know I had friends uh, introduced me to Slayer and all that, and the heavier music, and and it went from there. We we had like cover bands and and playing Pantera too and everything, and that's where I started. But like my, you know, I guess it, it's kind of weird. It's off uh, my my hero guitar hero is slash you know I, I i he's just there's no one cooler than than that guy you know like whoa yeah whoa i mean whoa With you know yeah they, they, <laughs> there's, there's way better guitarists you know but but it's just the swag everything like he's he just rock and roll metal you know it's like yeah so that's my guy i i i get it i've 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 uh uh i play guitar that you know like in a band or anything but i play guitar by myself I'll, like it's the instrument i connected to and uh i feel the exact same way I, i've always loved slash but my guy's always been alexi laiho from children oh. of bodum um and so yeah I, I totally get it it's just the whole thing the look the aesthetic the touch the, the fucking metal like yeah. It's uh, so I totally, I totally understand. And I've always loved Slash. I mean, Guns N' Roses is one of my favorite bands ever growing up. So I, I, I totally get that. Absolutely. Okay. Sammy, how about you? <clears throat> uh, I guess, well, I guess when I was about a sophomore, I had a buddy that, you know, he had a Jackson and Randy Rhodes. Oh, and the he best. Or a lot. Yeah, that was a real, I actually own that. We actually traded. So the story went from him showing me how to like play one and little. Metallica wrist to me getting one from my parents. They I finally convinced them to buy me like this Fender Strat from like the local music store. Okay. And he wanted to get into jazz music. So he's like, hey, you want to trade? So he traded me that 
kick-ass guitar just for like a regular red looking strat and um well from there i just learned more stuff on the guitar and once i heard rex and pantera i knew like i really wanted to play bass at some point and the opportunity opened up in another band i was in uh that was actually one of our old drummers luis that passed away he was our drummer in that band as well um i started playing bass for that band and i just been playing bass for the different projects i've been a part of since then fantastic so it was really like the the kind of like the basis from like pantera and, yeah. and that sort of sound awesome awesome yeah. oh dead boy <laughs> Uh, just, just like once I, I found out from the music from the wrestling like I started going on YouTube looking at different music videos like from Bullet from Attila when they first came out Emotionless and White when they first came out Asking Alexandria Danny Warsnop's like one of my biggest like inspiration like early Danny oh, yeah. and then, uh, the vocalist from Ocean's 8 Alaska him too fantastic also like Kurt Cobain Eddie Vedder was it always um was it always an intention for you guys uh to mix the like the the screaming and the clean vocals for me yes yeah that was something you always wanted to do well i i let him do what he feels comfortable yeah. doing with <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah personally like uh you know like i'd rather it just be all like hard and screaming and 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 and, and cut it cut it out but I understand that He's got to be comfortable and he's got to be a, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's got to make no. it his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so he's yeah, got he, they give me creative. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's really cool. That's really cool to hear, actually. I love that. Um, And I mean, quite frankly, the, the cleans, you've got great chops. Like they, uh, I mean, it kind of, oddly enough, there's this, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but there's this like uh, TV show and there's a movie. Um, it's all on Amazon called uh, American Satan is the movie. And the TV show is called Paradise City. Yeah. And uh, it's all done by Ash Avelson, who's the owner of Sumerian Records. And it's about like a band that sells their soul to the devil and et cetera. Um, but the lead singer of that band is in real life the same lead singer of Black Veil Brides. And I can't remember his name right now. But Remington. huh? Remington. He's the actual voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, but he does a totally different voice for the band that he's in with in the show than he does in Black Veil Brides. It's a lot more like kind of it's his clean. Voice. Huh? It's not his voice. It's oh, it's a, not? It's Remington's from Palais Royale. No way. Wait, yeah. hang on. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I did not know Actually, that. like how I found my own vocal style. I was going to say, like, you kind of reminded me of that. Like, that's, like, because I love, I fell in love with that. Like, I, I absolutely love that, that the, the Relentless is the name of the band on the TV yeah. show. Like, oh, man, I'm so, that's so crazy that you, you're literally, like, one of the first people I've ever talked to that actually has heard of that. Like not a lot of people have seen that that I know of. Um that's, that's really awesome though. I love so I really lo I actually loved when when the cleans came in. Growing up, I I I was always kind of notorious for not liking that at all because the cleans would always be super like whiny and like kind of more emo than anything mm -hmm. at one point in time when I was kind of like in middle school and high school and all that. But now they're kind of changing it up, getting more like g going farther with it. And I really like what I'm hearing now, especially that. There's actually another band that... I, have you guys ever heard of uh, Scream at the Sky? No. They're, they're another band from Texas that I've talked to. And they, they kind of... Uh, they do the same thing. They kind of do... Their sound is a little bit... Mm, um, it's a little bit more in the... You know, without trying to pigeonhole anyone, obviously. It's a little bit more in the vein of, like, corn, maybe. Oh. Um, but without like the heavy bass and stuff like that, kind of, um, but like just kind of like the overall vibe and, uh, but they're, they're another one that does the screaming and the singing and the way they do the singing is kind of unique to me like yours. And it's, it just stands out and I really enjoy it. I think you, I think you kill it with that. It's really good. <laughs> um, uh, but Mark, Mark, you're sorry. You're, uh, 
your drumming influences who got you behind the kit man like all these guys got cool stories <laughs> me it's just like okay i was like maybe like four or five years old and my uncle played tuba in the marching band and i had no interest in that but i saw the drum line at like the high school football games Ooh, doing yeah. their shit and i was like bro bro i need i i need some of that so ever since then i've been hell-bent on drumming on things so my parents got me some drumsticks like at a five-year-old age and that was a big mistake because i was drumming on everything like everything in the house and um from there on like it never stopped i'd always be in the car drumming on things driving somewhere my parents taking me somewhere um until finally i made it to middle school and they got me my first drum set and from there, they're like, okay, we're going to leave you alone with this, but let us leave the house first because it's really loud and annoying. <laughs> and so I would just go off for hours and hours, not, not knowing what to do because I hadn't figured it out yet. But over time, I slowly taught myself and then eventually got to where I am today. Um, by age 16, I was decent. By 18, I was pretty damn good. And then by age 20, 21, I hit like a professional level where there was like no style of music that I couldn't play. So oh, wow. yeah, self-taught. And then inspirations were like Travis Barker's speed with like one hand for like punk stuff. Um, Joey Jordison from Slipknot. Oh. Rush for like creativity. Neil Peart with all of his different things and stuff that he could do. I was mind blown. So that's kind of like how I grew up and just taught myself. And those were some of my influences. That's good. Did you ever get to see Joey play? I did not. By the time I actually got to a Slipknot show, because I've always been busy trying to, you know, get off the ground with my own projects and stuff like that. Of course. It already passed, but huge fan of him. Um, Vinnie Paul is my idol. Oh, God. Yeah, when he passed away, I was crushed because um, I actually got to go on tour with him. Shut and, up. Yeah, so uh, I got to tour with him. It was uh, through Texas, six dates in 2017. It, they, they were playing Hell Yeah. Yeah, Hell I was yeah. going to say, that would have been Hell Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so um, it was uh, my band, um, the band that's no longer around called Sons of Texas, and then Hell Yeah. What was and, the name of your band? Uh, the Crown. The Crown, okay. And so um, every night, not every night, I take that back, maybe every other night, Vinnie Paul would go side stage and watch me perform. And I, I do drums and lead vocals. And just to have Vinnie Paul watching me just brought tears to my eyes because wow. like, that's my idol. And he was watching me play. So that was like a huge thing for me. So, oof. Wow. That's, that's unreal, dude. Yeah. That's, I can't even imagine, like, yeah, Vinny, I, I mean, yeah, Vinny was huge for me as well. Vinny and Dime. Um, Vinny and Dime, yeah. So. Like, absolutely enormous. Uh, wow. Wow. That's a great story. I mean, all right, well, that's <laughs> a fucking, uh, that's a great fucking jump to another question that I guess, I guess you've sort of already answered it. Um, but for everybody else, uh, uh, what do you have any um, amazing like stories or memories of of either playing or attending a show? Everyone's like, "How are we going to top that, Elvis?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, it can just be a crazy story or just something that meant something a lot to you. You know, whatever. Yeah. I I think for me, um, the first show I ever went to was the Misfits with Michael Graves and I remember that night I went crazy because it was my first concert it was it was six feet under and then the Misfits and, what? Uh, and it was my first concert one of my friends took me to it and I went crazy I was freaking body surfing everything getting up on stage uh, I think like three times I was on stage with Michael and the bouncers had to like throw me off and you know like <laughs> warn me it's like the fourth time they warned me like one more time and you're out and uh and then like years down the road um on tour with him playing guitar for him 
so that that that's something that like for me was like wow you know and that's that's my cool story I guess. how well how did you end up playing guitar for him that's uh we we actually because again in del rio we would set up shows um and then also we got involved with uh with comic con in del rio awesome and and we invited him to to to, to be a guest for our com comic con there in del rio and then i i brought up the idea i was like hey uh do you want to do a couple songs and we could backline for you and he agreed we did 14 songs at the comic con and then after that it was just uh we sparked a, a friendship and and then i think it was like a year later we, we went on tour together so it was pretty cool wow dude that's incredible you just said so oh man the magic of comic con i love comic con that's fantastic we had doyle there too uh oh cool years later too and everything but yeah no it, it's a small town but the community is like just it, it's 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 a good community so that's awesome <laughs> that's really good to hear my cool story <laughs> you uh i don't have anything cool like that but um, yeah. or, and, and again again it can be like a, your favorite show you ever attended as well you know like As a fan, you know. The fan. Um, I think when I went. Okay, to so there I was. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sammy. Uh, I guess it would have been um, like the Deftones tour when they were touring White Pony back in like 2000. They did oh this wow! Stadium uh, tour, and I got to sit pretty close to the stage, so to see that that was pretty cool. Yeah. I just have short hair, and a lot of people would confuse me with. The singer Chino. It was really weird. <laughs> I don't think I look anything like that, dude. But and then when I had really long hair, I'd go to the skate parks and like the DFW because I used to live in Denton for a while. And I had a dude confuse me for Stephen Carpenter because I always been like a huskier dude, but then I had long, you know, hair, long beard. But that was pretty cool because you get to really feel what's going on the closer you sit to a stage. So yeah, and then then to be. Uh, like the first time I saw them was at the White Rabbit back in like the mid nineties in San Antonio. Damn. And they're literally playing like on a little, you know, 20 foot wide stage to seeing them run like a stadium tour. So it was cool. It was cool to see how an artist could get to that point. So I'd say that's probably it for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's always like, for me, like I, I uh, up here in Michigan, uh, when I first started going to like real like metal shows and stuff like that, it was like every single show I would go to, there was this band opening that like they were small at the time, Black Dahlia Murder, and they would open for every fucking show that came through Michigan, pretty much. And then so watching, going to all those, and then watching them become what they became, one of the biggest in death metal. Uh, it, that you know, I get that. That that's a really, it's an awesome experience to see the evolution. You know what I mean? Like ride or die fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I caught them live too one time. I was in Seattle for work, and the Summer Slaughter tour of ah. 2011 was going on, and so everybody was like, "Hey, we're gonna go do this. You want to go?" I was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna go check what's going on downtown." So I took uh, my rental car. And I found out that that was going on. So I got to catch them, Whitechapel, uh, Six Feet Under. They were still touring around. And uh, Oceana. Oh, uh, so I, good. I think they just started touring again. So those guys ripped it too. So yeah. that was cool to see Black Dahlia, though. They do tear it up on stage. Yes. Yeah. They, they're fucking fantastic. One of the best. Hello, my friends. My name is Burton. And I am the host of the Michigan Metal Podcast lost in the dark podcast and i would like to introduce you to an all new all paranormal podcast called follow the reaper where i examine all true first or second hand listener submitted paranormal or unexplainable encounters of any kind so if you or anyone you know has a story that they would like to share or have shared on the show please reach out to us on social media or Gmail at follow the Reaper podcast. I would love 
to hear from you. And of course, please enjoy this episode of Lost in the Dark. It's not a good day to be a bad guy! What's up, metalheads? This is Wayne. And Michelle. And we are from the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast, and you are listening to Burton and Aaron on the Lost in the Dark podcast. Raise your horns. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Mark, did you say your... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, we started with you. That's right. That's well, I mean, right. I got a few more. I got a, I got a running theme for some of my, uh, my experiences. So when I was 17 yeah. years old, um, I was just back and forth listening to the uh, "God Hates Us All" album by Slayer. Oh. Like I wake up in the morning, Disciple. yeah, to that, you know, yeah. and, and like before I go to bed, you know, tuck myself in, put a little "God Hates Us All" in there, you know. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I get word. I was, I was in, uh, I was a senior in high school. I was still 17. I hadn't turned 18 yet. Um, and Slayer was coming through. This was like the weirdest bill to me. Uh, oh, who's the opener? Um, ah, damn it. I can't remember. They'll, they'll come to me later, but there was an opener kill switch engage and then Slayer. This was 2004, December in San Antonio. Wow. And, um, God, I can't figure out. The, I, I'll remember it later. Um, so anyway, I, I, I got there just in, so, in time to see the, the opener and the, like, the last song or whatever. Then I moved kind of in the middle to watch Kill Switch. And then come Slayer time, hmm. I move and finagle my way. I'm a 17-year-old little kid, you know, in the Slayer mosh pit, just snuggling my way in there. And I finally get to the rail. I'm in the front now. And um, they play uh, uh, Darkness of Christ, right? The, you know, the intro track of God Hates Us All album. Yeah. And it, like it starts playing and I'm like getting so excited. I'm so pumped. 17 year old kid, nothing can stop me. And then the lights go out as soon as, uh, you know, uh, Darkness of Christ ends and you hear Bostaff, Paul Bostaff on the drums with the hats going. Sss, sss, sss. And then Disciple kicks in. That's my favorite song in the world. And just so many emotions. I started crying like a little girl. I was like, come on, Mark, get it together. You're at a Slayer concert, man. I was crying like a little girl. I was so happy, screaming, serrated eardrum, so loud it blew out my eardrum. I didn't care. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I the time of my life. So um, That's awesome. Yeah. Fast forward to... Um, their farewell tour, uh, Slayer's farewell tour. Um, I want to say that was like 2016, 2017. Uh, yeah. Somewhere I think it, yeah, it started like 17 and went to like 18, 19. 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple legs. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm a grown man now. You know, I'm watching Slayer play. And then they're all standing there, you know, before they, they finish out with Angel of Death. And I'm like... <laughs> 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 I was like, why is this happening again? What is what is so I mean, emotional about Slayer? I just couldn't figure it out. I was like, this is a running theme. <laughs> and then sure enough, um, right before COVID hit, uh, it was November 2019 or mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. October 2019, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Um, Misfits, original lineup, billed to play at Madison Square Garden in New York. I went. <laughs> And they all come out on stage. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on here, man? Like, it's just a running theme with me. I'm just like the little girl, the band. But I don't know. I just get super emotional about bands playing and just when they kill it and they kill it. And I just got to cry. So, no, I get it, man. I, I absolutely get that. Uh, happens sometimes like it's especially when like they like when you go to see slayer like i saw them on the farewell tour as well yep. and they put up that uh the whole tribute to jeff the uh, Heineken, but oh yeah. god yeah. that that and then when you go to see slipknot and they put up the tribute to joey and paul it's yep. like fuck man because like oh yeah it's tough it's tough because you tender spot it's a tender spot yeah yeah absolutely 
Absolutely. That's incredible. So you saw a show at Madison Square Garden. They sold it out. That's honorary. I've never. Wow. That's incredible, dude. Like, yeah. I've never seen a show. Uh, the only time I've ever seen a show outside of Michigan, actually, was, uh, well, te technically one time I saw the convalescents play in Ohio, but it wasn't a real show, technically. Uh, and then uh, I did see Iron Maiden once in Illinois. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. I've always wanted to explore. Have you, so as, yeah, have you guys ever played together out, uh, out, you said you played in Mexico. Uh, have you ever played in anywhere else outside of Texas? Not, not I yet. think in this recent lineup, but we, we have, uh, right. I have with the, with the previous lineups and stuff, but, well, uh, all right, then in, in your, in your experience, in your experience, everywhere, everywhere that you've been, um, where would you say you've experienced kind of like the, the, w w the most memorable crowd, like the craziest, like this place is fucking hopping. These guys are crazy. Like where, where have you thought that on your journey? Honestly, <laughs> shit. I mean, I, I think the crowds, honestly, in Mexico was the craziest. Yeah. They love metal down there. They really do. They're, they're, they're crazy. Rock and Rio is amazing. Like, yeah. I mean, we had them doing Walls of Death yeah. and everything. I, I, I mean, jumped it, off the roof. Yeah, he jumped off the <laughs> roof into a pool. <laughs> and then they threatened to like kick us out. They're like, all right, yeah, you they were gonna crazy. arrest me. Yeah, they were gonna arrest him for doing that. Um, but uh, but no, it was but uh it, here in the states, man, it's I think uh Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. I, I really like playing there. They, they, they're wild too, and it's like uh it's that like old school, like that Southern metal, like, like they love that stuff. And, and they're, they're crazy. Uh, I like their crowds there. Um, shoot. Uh, that first show we did on last tour was pretty good too. Yeah. yeah Houston. Right? Yeah, Houston. Yeah. Houston. Houston's pretty good. And, but I think Mark has more experience playing it. Mark's played yeah, everywhere. Been out so. of the country. Everywhere. Yeah, with, with his band. I've played Germany, Colombia, the UK, um, Mexico. We are supposed to play Australia, but COVID hit, so that stopped us from going. Um, but in Colombia, way down there south, um, they just don't give a fuck. They'll stab somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, um, they, they put on, like, free shows they they they'll bill like big headliners and just rely solely on like uh drink sales and things like that and have a free show so when we played down there there was like homeless people there there was like rich people there there was crazy people there and everybody just came together and enjoyed themselves and i got like video of them just like huge mosh pit from beginning to end non-stop they have no chill over there down there <laughs> so yeah that they're definitely some crazy partiers over there that's that's incredible that's incredible what about what about not to not to single anything out but you you guys already mentioned houston do you have a favorite because you guys just did back what in like in um like may like late may to early june you guys did the unforsaken tour with edge of Dest the edge of destiny yeah. Yes. Yeah. How 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 was that? It was like a that was like a t all Texas run, right? Yeah. 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 It was a it was like our reunion tour. It was um because oh really? We've been on like I, I think our last show together was what like early twenty nineteen. Yeah. I was gonna say because that's when what uh what? what I've become came out. That's when yeah. that video came out. Yeah. Yes, and uh and then uh soon after that I moved to El Paso because of my job and also covid all that and then covid and everything. Sure. of course so it, it kind of just stopped and then i joined another band and er i mean everybody's got their own things going on and with other bands too um okay and and yeah we, we kind of you know we didn't do anything and, and then all of a sudden i was like you know what i miss it you know and i, I started reaching out to everyone again i was like hey i had to apologize too because you know back in 2019 it, it kind of ended up it didn't end well uh, i was i was kind of a dick 
So, you know, I, I reached out to them and I apologized for, you know, my wrongs and, and they gave me another chance and here we are. We hooked it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, that's it. Yeah. One a... time he was going to kill me. He was like, oh, <laughs> <fun."> <laughs> I was that angry old yeah. guy. Oh. And, uh, but yeah, yeah. He's the violent one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, like, uh, I don't even, I don't even know if you can be a metal band. If at some point in time, one member doesn't want to kill another, <laughs> like it's, yeah. it seems to be part of the DNA. <laughs> like every yeah. band goes through that, but I'm just happy that the story resulted in a more or less happy ending and you guys are all still here together. And that's absolutely fantastic. Um, so definitely. Yeah. That tour was just our, you know, that like, let's get our feet wet. wet. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. They just coming yeah. back. Uh, had so what did what so yeah because you guys kind of reformulated right before pandemic you come out with that what i've become video great video great fucking track i love i absolutely love that song uh and then and then what that was like that was like june of 2019 i think and and then uh and then less than nine months later pandemic hits so how did that how did that affect the, the the chemistry like how did you guys uh work through uh not being able like did you write anything like did it like how did you guys kind of work through uh all that i think for the most part um like mark has his band i had another band that i had joined what are those give him shout outs what are those bands well i mean mark plays for the crown the crown yeah. the crown still okay beautiful and then uh, when I moved to El Paso, um, I joined this band there uh, called Eye of the Bermuda. And then at one point I was like, you know what, I, I, I'm i like you. Um, when it comes to like the, the, the clean vocals, when it gets too emo, I get uncomfortable. Yeah. I get uncomfortable. I'm like, man, I'm <laughs> oh, a grown man. man. <laughs> I do not want. I don't want to hear whiny um, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's whiny. So uh, that's so why I made a recipe. So I was like, you know right. what? Um, I walked away from that. And then after I walked away, the band kind of disbanded. And then I started contacting the, the, the you know, the other musicians. I was like, hey, let's, let's start another band, you know, and get a different vocalist. And then that's where Sir Guard Canna came from. Um, so it was the... the Sir, 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 what is it? Sir Guard Canna. Sir Gar can you spell that? Sir Guard Canna. You've yeah. uh, actually interviewed them. Oh, yeah. Circa, Circa. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Circa Arcana. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was doing for a while. And then it, same thing, like, because I, I, I'm more of like a speed guy. Like, I, I like to play fast. I like to, you know, um, different <laughs> things. So after a while, I was like, okay, I, I need something different. And then I, I walked away from that, too. And then... That's when I was like, you know what? Let's let's bring this back, and and yeah. <laughs> so wait, you were playing with Circa for a while? Yeah, yeah. I'm the crazy guy with the with the V with the with the robe. Oh shit! Yeah. Okay, all right. Hell yeah, dude. Oh wow, that's I'm insane. Acting, right? Yeah. That's wild. That is so wild. Hell yeah. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> oh wow. Um. So yeah, and well, Sammy. Sammy's other project is Sempra Service as well. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Sempra? Sem Semper a Service? Sem Semper Service. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I, I joined them back in October of 2019 as like a, a bass player, but they had a bass player. So it was kind of like a lineup that the singer has in case certain members can't make dates, then we step in to fill in. So I was like a backup for Luis at the time. He was a bass player and um now that that's changed a little bit so now i'm one of the main bass players for that band so i'm real active with them too right now we were actually just playing in florida a couple weeks ago at the central middle central florida metal fest oh awesome yeah so, how'd that go dude we played and literally like the storm i guess that build up from the hurricane coming yeah it, and we we stopped playing like 20 minutes before it hit and everything had to like kind of stop for about an hour. And I think someone lost one of their slots waiting for everything to kind of dry out and move everything out of there too. But uh, it was where, cool. where in Florida was it? Orlando. Okay. 
All right. All right. So, yeah, the headliners were um, Honor Burn, Burn and Body, mm -hmm. Children, uh, Signs of the Swarm was there. They played. Oh. Yeah, they're pretty heavy. And then Volvodini yeah. South Africa was oh. down there, too. I got to see them for the first time. That was pretty sweet. They're great. Yeah, they tore it up. They're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, Signs of the Swarm's new album is fantastic. Um, but yeah, they yeah, yeah, it was kind of, you know, we had a, I mean, no fucking, that's intense to be down there for like that, that hurricane was gnarly. Um, but up here, like a few, like a, back in early August, we had the Michigan Metal Fest and it was fucking pounding rain, lightning and thunder all day. A whole bunch of bands lost their slots. It was kind of a bummer, but. You know, it was still, it was still, uh, they still pulled it off. It was still a pretty decent little fest. Convalescent still played at least. So, <laughs> um, but hell yeah, absolutely. Um, no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I love, I love hearing about people's other projects. I did not know about those. Uh, in terms of, I do have a question in terms of like, uh, uh I saw, I saw, uh, when I was doing research on you guys, I saw something about, the lyrical content having a lot to do with uh, uh, kind of like military stuff. And I wanted to ask about that. Is that still like, is, is that accurate? Uh, the old stuff, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the old stuff is yeah. because, like I said, like I'm a veteran myself. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the original vocalist, veteran as well. So a lot of the music and, and our direction was was to tell the, you know, our story uh, from battle, you know, uh, the, wow. the stuff you carry with you, you know, on a day to day, you know, what you think about the things that bother you. Um, so that, that was sort of like the message. Um, and, it, and it was always like a battle, like, you know, like that struggle within and everything like, like you, you seem normal to everybody, but you're not really normal, you know, like you're, you're, it's rough inside. And, and that's what we were like, pushing so a lot of like the old songs of course now he sings them so so it, it's there but now everything that's coming up new it's it's all just he's a great writer like the lyrics that he writes uh, they blow me away like I, i'm like a poet you know so i really enjoy like reading what he writes and uh but it's all just different for him it, it's, it's mm -hmm. stories I really emotions like. yeah so it is different now, the, 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 as far as the lyrics, the, the lyrics go. So, do, um, when did, did you guys know? Did you and the original vocalist know each other from service, or did you meet each other like after? We actually met each other afterwards. Okay. Um, I was uh, looking for a vocalist, and he worked at a at a gym, and this guy all tatted up and everything. I was like. I was like, man, I, I should ask him. He looks like he sings, you know? Just, <laughs> and then eventually I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to go ask him. I was like, hey, bro, you know, uh, have you ever tried singing? And he was like, oh, yeah. He was like a big Parkway Drive fan. Oh, and, I love Parkway, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's how it started. All of a sudden I invited him over. We had a little rehearsal, and then it was like, boom, we, we got our vocalist then. And, uh, but we were both struggling pretty bad with ptsd so we were actually pretty toxic for each other so we were always doing crazy stuff getting into trouble and because we would you know egg each other on there was no like right no stopping us um because we we're both pretty messed up and unfortunately it got him you know and, and i'm still around and it's it's shitty um but you know, it is, it's sucks, but <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we are certainly glad you're still around for sure. Um, that is, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that is a very intense thing for sure. What, what did, did you guys serve, but even though you didn't know each other, do you guys serve together? Like roughly around the same times in the same places yeah, or yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I saw a lot of, uh, in the thing, in the blurb that I read, the, there was a lot of, uh, it said it uh, focused on a lot of the Afghan and, and Iraq war and stuff like that. And that was also a big, yeah, had a big impact on me as well. But, um, the, uh, 
currently though so so now since um since dead boy is, is is the vocalist you do most of the writing now then for, for at least on the vocal or the lyrical side yeah uh do you is there anything specifically that you draw from on that just how i feel that's it yeah experiences Expe yeah experiences yeah yeah that's pretty much it is there so, a has like input like certain idea and then i go off that so so you guys when you guys play live i know you play you said you play some of the old stuff um, and obviously, uh, uh, what I've become and lost it all. Are there any like new, newer tracks from this lineup? Oh yeah. We're actually working on it right now. Um, we have what, uh, it's five or six songs, six. It's a, a yeah. an EP that, uh, we'll be releasing here pretty soon. Awesome. Um, you. Yeah. And it's all new, new stuff, stuff that hasn't been released. So it's, it's all him it, it's yeah. vocals and lyrics. And same vibe as lost it all more or less. Sure. Is there a uh is there any sort of like lyrical uh thematic element that runs through, or is it kind of just all different, like standalone? Oh, that's thing? all different. Fair I enough. Just, Fair enough. And then verses. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um that's another thing where like if you listen to our our, our music, you can't really I don't know, to me, you can't really tie it down because it's all different. Um, like, one song's totally different from the other one. Like, you might listen to the one song, and it's like, oh, shit, it's like speed metal, like, melodic. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we're playing a ballad, you know? Yeah, you can't and, put us uh, in a box, but you'll know what's up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what, though? That's, um, I'm really glad you brought that up because that is something through, because back, back at the beginning of Pandemic, uh, bef basically before the pandemic, this podcast was audio only. Like we never did. We hadn't figured out the whole video thing yet. And we've been doing it for about two years already. And then pandemic hit and it forced us to be on video if we wanted to keep doing this. And, um, it was around that time we started having guests and one of the first guests ever was Keith. And then he, he continued, uh, uh, to send us bands and through all everyone that I've talked to in that in this time that has been a very very common thing um that there's no th there was a point in time where there was metal and then there was this gigantic family tree of subgenres and there was a point there's also a point in time where it's like you have if you play a kind of music you have you're kind of pigeonholed into a subgenre that's all going away now like there because now with all the the next wave of bands like you guys and everybody else coming up um it, it you guys just like everybody else draw from so many different subgenres that you do so many different things in your music and throughout the album that it, it, you can't call it one thing or another anymore it's kind of a blend of so many different things and i think that's incredible because it takes away like there's way less elitism now like there's way less like like oh uh this band can't play with this band because one's too deathcore and one's too hardcore or punk or whatever you know what i mean there's no more of that it seems like that seems like to be going away and i think that's a really good thing uh, well, you got knock loose playing with suicide boys too exactly you got you got fuck home jet shit like three days ago up here in michigan you had five finger death punch playing with mega death like you know what i mean you had actually uh uh and i think the who the hu and um fire from the gods were opening that show so that's a crazy <laughs> fucking every single one of those bands is a completely different group of yeah. fans but then but the more different kinds of fans you get at that kind of a show, then all of a sudden you expose them to all this stuff. Now all of a sudden you got a bunch of kids that were fans of Fire of the Gods getting into Megadeth and Metallica and, and Slayer, you know, and that'll lead them to Lamb of God and Cannibal Corpse. And you know what I mean? Like, it, it just, it goes on. And I think it's a lot better to have more eclectic shit. Like, I think it's, I think, I think it's a really cool thing that we're seeing right now in, in, in the scene in general, you know? Um, also, uh, if you guys have never heard of it, there, there is a brand new documentary that came out recently called, I'll, I'll, I'll send, I'll just send you the link. It's called 
between exaltation and aggression and extreme death metal documentary. And it, it kind of goes into that a little bit it be, in a better way than I've seen any other metal. I'm really into metal documentaries. So yes. uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's a really good one. I highly recommend it. It'd be something to watch while you're going to Germany. <laughs> it's a long flight. I bet. I bet. How long is it for you? Uh, it's <laughs> about from San Antonio to yeah. 10 hours, 11, 12. Yeah, that's intense. That's that's a fucking big one. Wow. <laughs> it's gonna be great though. It's gonna be you guys are gonna have a great time. Um well uh we had I think we've been going for a little bit more than an hour now. Um there is there is it we've kind of gone through unless is there anything else you guys wanted to get into uh before? What well, I think I we do have uh we're releasing it as a single. It's a two song, and it's the last two songs that the original vocalist uh, recorded, uh, Enrique. And we're actually releasing that here uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, we actually just got the artwork and everything for it. And it's just as a, you know, just like an homage, uh, you know, like a tribute, in tribute to, to him. Because they never formally got released, so we're just going to release them just throw it out there and and you know so that his parents his family can listen to it it could just be out there you know and and, so and they still run the same gym yeah called the edge so oh. it, it we're, we'll be releasing that pretty soon too uh before the ep drops so and 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 fingers crossed that the ep is out before the end of the year it should right? yeah for sure yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and once you guys are <clears throat> back from Germany, are there any, uh, 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 tours or shows or anything coming up after that? There's a festival in Las Vegas on the, on March 23rd to the 25th of next year. Oh, okay. All right. Wait, there, is that Psycho Fest? No, it's Apocalypse in the Desert. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. I haven't heard of that one. And, uh, this yeah, is the no. first one. Yeah. As far as the rest of the year, it, it'll probably be like one-offs here and there. Um, but uh, for the most part, it'll be next year. We're, we're gearing up for it'll be more constantly more. Yeah. All right, beautiful. I love it. Um, so I got I got two more for you. Um, uh, real quick, do any of you have have any of you ever played or have any sort of ties to Michigan at all? Uh, I've played Michigan a couple times. Where have you played? uh the what is it the metal shop or the, the machine shop oh yeah yeah i love the machine shop yeah me too the the sound there is like a giant pair of nice tits it just <laughs> <laughs> the tits the tits let that's uh that is absolutely one of my favorite venues in detroit that's or i'm sorry in 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 michigan it's in flint i don't know why it's a detroit um uh, it, uh, my cousin, uh, uh, who I'm very close with, I actually started this podcast with him originally. Uh, he, uh, he lives right out there, uh, right near it. So him and I go to shows there, uh, all the time. And, and yeah, we've seen a lot of great stuff there. Who, who'd you play with when you were there? Uh, so we were two shows or I'm sorry, two, two separate tours. We were on tour of flaw for one of those. Oh, okay. And then we were also on tour with the 69 eyes. Oh, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm Bill, definitely... the 69 Eyes, Wednesday 13. Yeah. Us, and then Sumo Psycho. Fuck, what year was that? Uh, Right before COVID, actually, 2020. 2020? All right. I don't think I was at that one, but I remember that flyer. Yeah, that, January. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I for sure remember that. Um, And my final question, this is this has nothing to do with metal. I always ask this to everyone who's been on the show for the first time. Um, do any of you, have any of you, because this is just another thing that I'm really into besides metal, have any of you ever experienced anything in your entire life that you would describe in any way as paranormal? Whether it be ghosts fucking ufos bigfoots anything at all like do, have, do any of you have any sort of paranormal paranormal story that you'd be willing to share oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah all right i have one uh 
I was living, uh, it, it, this happened in Del Rio, right? And um, one day, uh, I think I was in the kitchen and my daughter, she uh, she comes running and she's like, hey, dad, dad, you know, like, like there was this woman like in the room and she was just standing there all in black in the corner and she, she, she was looking at me and, you know, she turned around to like, go get me, turned back around, gone, right? And I was like, Okay, I, I was up there looking. I was like, you had to, you know, imagine it or, or something, right? So that was it. Um, a couple of weeks later, I was uh, I was hosting a, a boxing fight, you know, on pay per view, and I had a couple of friends over, and one of my friends goes into the kitchen to grab some beers. Like, hey, you guys want some beers? Yeah, yeah. He goes in there. He comes out. And he's like, holy shit! He's like, I was like, what? He's like, dude, I just saw a woman all in black standing in your kitchen and then all of a sudden she's gone and i was like what the fuck and i was like dude honestly like my daughter saw something like that not too long ago and okay so i was like wow this is crazy fast forward a couple weeks later i had another friend over same thing he sees a, a lady all dressed in black on the stairwell and uh and he's freaking out i was like dude what the hell like there's this lady there and i was like no way dude like you're somebody told you about it or what you're, you're fucking with me right and no like uh he saw a lady there too and then what's crazy is that as a child um i i, I like i was always out in the streets walking around like i never liked being home i um i was always wandering around i remember several times I'd be walking home in the dark at night, in the middle of the night, and I would see this lady, and she'd always appear random places walking towards me. And every time I saw her, like, like the hairs behind my neck like stood up, and and I knew like this isn't right. This this lady is not normal. Like this is freaking crazy. And I would see her random places. Sometimes during the day, like I'd be like at the mall, and I'd see this lady. And every time I'd see her, like, she, she had this weird gait. Like, the way she walked was weird. And uh, so I'm like, it's got to all be tied in, right? So uh, a couple of years ago, I went into this church. Uh, you know, I, I was trying to, you know, find myself. And, uh, and I felt uncomfortable because, like, the, the pastor guy was, like, looking at me. And, and I, I was like, oh, man, like, why is he looking at me all weird? At the end of, like, the church service, like, he walks up to me. And, and he's like, hey, man, uh, I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable or anything. But, like, uh, like I kept seeing this lady, like, like behind you. And, and I'm like, what the heck? Like, and and it, it just all, like, clicked. I was like, this lady, like, everybody's seen her around me. I've seen her like as growing up. So I don't know, it, it, to me, that's just crazy. So there's always something like around me and, and it's some lady like following me. <laughs> Is she always in black? Yeah. Mm. So it, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Honestly, I thought you were going to say the pastor says, um, you, you can't park your, your right, game like, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One time I made a homemade Ouija board and I got scared because it answered me. So like I instead of like saying goodbye, I freaked out. I went outside and I burned it and dug a hole and put it, the ashes in there. Oh and shit! In the house where I dug the hole, it smells like death to this day. Like it smells like rotting corpse. Yeah, I mean I. And that house has never been the same since. I. <laughs> so there, so there's a. Do, do do you still know the people that live there? Oh uh, no, the. Uh, we had to move out, and there it's for rent still, but no one's up, no one's body it. Interesting, yeah. That I mean, see, where like I'm, I've always been fascinated, and and I absolutely love this stuff. I have another podcast called Follow the Reaper, where I talk about all this stuff specifically. Um, but uh, it's always fascinated me. Uh, but I I do come into it, um kind of a little a little bit skeptically you know i'm not just like a foot like i kind of need the extraordinary evidence uh for the extraordinary you know all that stuff uh but 
And so Ouija boards is something I've always been iffy on, but God damn it. I know that lore really well. And I know that if you don't say goodbye, it could cause some problems. <laughs> like <laughs> quit opening portholes to the dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is crazy though, how it still smells like death. That's patient started shifting, doors would slam shut. You hear really hear things walk in the in the attic in the roof. It's crazy. Wait, 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 wait. What was the question that you asked that it answered? Do you remember? I just asked if anyone was here. It just it, it said yes, and I freaked out. I was a little chicken. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's interesting. Uh, this is the first time I think I've ever gotten a, a real Ouija board story. That's really cool. Hell yeah. Anybody else have anything? I have not experienced In nothing. all your travels. In all my <laughs> travels and all my crazy shenanigans, not even a little whisper or a tap on the shoulder. Or a prostate exam, nothing. <laughs> the last one was. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you, Sam, do you have anything? Yeah, it actually happened when I was about nine years old. Um, I was in my room. And my parents were real cool when I was growing up. They would let me just have a bunch of shit in my room. Like, that you don't really see around today. Like, I had one wall. It was all Michael Jordan shit. Hell yeah. It was like a bunch of metal edge magazines torn apart and used as wallpaper cool and i guess maybe stuff like that and i was really into like creepy stuff and stuff like that you know um so one day i'm trying to go to bed and i just remember hearing something talk coming from my tv and i didn't really know what the fuck was going on so like i freak out and it does it again and then i run to my parents room and i start telling them hey you know something's going on in my room they wake up all distraught like what do you mean what's going on like they, they thought somebody broke in our house so uh, my mom goes to my room and yells at my dad, like, oh, it's okay. Nothing's going on here. So she didn't believe me that I had saw what I saw and everything that was coming out of my TV. So, like, she tells me to go back to bed. I didn't want to go to bed. I ended up crashing in their room for, like, a few days. Finally, they get me to go to my room. It happens again. So this time it's coming from my TV with no screen on. It's just voices and so I ran to their room to go tell them, like, hey, it's happening again. And it's always at nighttime, you know, like, that's when all the scary shit happens, right? It's dark. She goes in my room, and my little lamp, I had, like, a little lamp, like, two owls. It has, like, those, like, roller switches, like, old school roller switch. Sure, yeah. Flashing while the TV was talking, like, a radio <laughs> was talking, like, to another dude on a radio. That's what it sounded like. And so she freaked out, and that was pretty much that. She had, like, a priest come to our house and do, like, a... A prayer thing and it was like a pretty pretty crazy thing so and then the other time was i was like 21 i was at my parents house they were asleep and they had these wall switches in their house where when you turn them on they turn off but when they're off they light up so like the switch is glowing and i'm there trying to make breakfast at like two in the morning i hear the door open and i'm like fuck you i woke somebody up so they're probably gonna be pissed at me I hear a bunch of little footsteps coming down the house and they had solid steel tiles so you could really hear when somebody's coming barefoot and it sounded like one of the dogs coming so i was like "Shit, my dad's gonna come over here and bitch me out because i'm still awake at like two three in the morning making food uh i look around the island to see the dog and then i look down the hallway to see maybe him so nobody was coming I looked down in front and I couldn't see nothing. So I thought maybe the dog was running like real close around the island to come around to the kitchen where I was. And then all of a sudden I just kept looking down and I noticed the footsteps running from the sound of tile going to hardwood floor. And then it just made me look at like the French doors. And I just saw like the lights flicker on the wall switch on and off. And then my porch lights in our backyard, just they turn on and off real quick. And I don't, I don't know what that was, but I literally heard all that and saw that. So it's and all these stories are from Del Rio. One was on like north side of town, and then the other story was from uh, when we lived downtown Del Rio, south side. Wow. Moral of the story: Don't live in Del Rio. Don't <laughs> dare move over there. <laughs> it's nicknamed Hell Rio. <laughs> sounds sounds like there's a good reason for that. It, it wow, that's that is to hear the footsteps and then to see the lights flickering, kind of in response to the direction. Yes, that's very interesting. It was, it was scary. I ain't gonna lie. I was, to this day, I don't even know what the hell it was. You know, I just figured I might have saw something. And then eventually, my parents got divorced. My mom stayed in that house. So eventually she sold it. But in, 
before she did, she told me she would hear doors opening, doors closing, footsteps, but her being an older lady in good spirits, like, oh, it's like a friendly ghost just to keep me company. <laughs> Instead of like worrying, like, oh, fuck, right. what the fuck is that? You it's know, like, it was, mom, the house is on fire. Just like, a friendly ghost. <laughs> right, it's okay, mom. <laughs> Apparently Casper would live there. I don't know what she thought it was. <laughs> Wow. That is, that is a good, that is a really good one. Actually, that's a really good story. I've, it's very rare that you get the, that many kind of like indications at the same time. That's, that's very interesting. Um, well, you know what? Just one last one. I just thought of to wrap this all up since it is October, it's Halloween time. You guys are about to go over to Germany. It's Oktoberfest over there. Um, do you guys uh, any any like favorite horror movies that you always watch during this time of year? Recently, I got into uh, like Halloween again. Fuck yeah, love that series. <laughs> yeah, new I'm ones coming out on the fourteenth. Conjuring's good too. Conjuring's awesome. Oh, the first one is oh one of the best. One mm -hmm. of the best. I'm uh, what is it? The Strangers. I love that movie. Yeah. I have not seen that one. Oh, it's good. It's, it's good. got Liv Tyler in it. All right. Uh, uh, Steve Tyler's daughter. Yeah, yeah. She was in uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that came out like early 2000s, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and that one surprisingly still still holds weight to it. It's more of like a... Uh, it's like a realistic... Movie. Like a realistic kidnapping type of movie. Yeah. All right. And so, yeah, it, it's it's pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, I'll check that out for sure. I think there's a part two, right? Yeah, but I didn't see it. <laughs> Anything you watch, Sam? uh yeah i love old slasher movies so anything of friday the 13th or yeah i'm a huge uh texas chainsaw massacre ah oh, uh, awesome i like watching all those and that remake they did oh that was good La right? yeah, yeah was it this year in february uh they did they did a good job on it i was pretty yeah. pretty pretty stoked on it excellent excellent yeah and that new there's a remake of uh hellraiser that just came out like yesterday or something on hulu oh i don't um, know yeah out. they they kind of i think they i think they re like i think it's a reboot it's supposed to be like the first one again kind of a thing but oh. i think i think i could be wrong i haven't seen it yet um yeah fantastic fantastic yeah definitely those are definitely some good ones um but yeah you guys uh we've gone for over an hour you i've you've answered everything so <laughs> uh i thank you guys so much for being on the show. This meant the absolute world to me. Um, I, I, um, and yeah, you guys, every single one of you um, is welcome back on anytime you want. I'm actually planning on hitting up a lot of people um, in, in here in the next week or so, um, hopefully to do some kind of like Halloween thing. I don't really know what yet, but I'll put it together and, and I'll reach out to you guys if you're interested. And um and yeah thank you guys thank you guys so much for being on the show anytime you want to come back on to promote anything you're welcome and i wish you nothing but safe travels and an excellent trip to germany thank you thank, thank you man. Man. i appreciate it oh man i i appreciate you guys everybody uh be sure to check out the lost it all and what i've become music videos they fucking rock get them on spotify get them on apple itunes do all that um you guys said the posters for the germany stuff is is dropping like today yeah, yeah. All right, I I will repost all of that. And uh, when do you guys leave? October twenty sixth. October twenty. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this will be out way before that then. So this will be good. This will be promotion for that. Um. Uh, yeah, yeah. This will be out before the end of next week. So um, so thank you guys so much, seriously, for being on the show. Uh, huge shout out to you guys and your your uh. uh uh, the crowned Semper Service. Was there any other ones? Uh, there's an upcoming punk band called Eulogy in my hometown. Eulogy. Uh, yeah. Shout outs to everyone. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Keith and the Legend Recording Agency for for bringing us together. And uh, and yeah, thank you guys so much. This was absolutely incredible. I had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And and I'll I'll I'll, I'll end the recording and then we'll go out. Um. Those guys were just the absolute best. It was so much fun getting to talk with them. Uh, definitely, definitely covered covered the whole gambit. And uh, they were 
that that was an absolute joy. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you again, Donna Flames, for being on the show. You guys are welcome back anytime. And uh, yeah, and anytime ever. Everybody, one more time, be sure to check out Lost It All, their brand new music video. Be sure to follow them on all social media. Links in the description below. And that's going to do it for this episode of Lost in the Dark Podcast, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, we'll be back again very, very soon with so much more. But until next time, raise your fucking horns and bang your goddamn heads to some dawn of flames. Love you all to death. Good night. Lost in the dark.